Hey, look at that. We're back. That's right. The whole series is back. I'm not using Sony Vegas anymore and all the issues that stopped me from making videos are gone. What were they? Don't worry about it. Today, we're covering users and user groups. On the last episode, we talked about passwords. Yeah, complex policies, resetting passwords on compromised systems, Microsoft Management Console, and why the control panel is inferior in every way. Well, strong passwords don't mean anything if there are accounts that you don't even know about on your system. Looking at you, Kevin. Let's go ahead and talk about the two main accounts you'll be dealing with at its simplest level. First off, you've got your standard user. Usually, your standard user will have restricted rights, meaning they can't change any system objects or settings, install or uninstall programs, or change any of their own rights. The only permission they have are the permissions to carry out what they need to do. And then you have your administrators. Administrators can do whatever they want. They have the credentials, they have the power, and it's a power that you need to assign very carefully. Because of their powers, you want to have your administrators live by a higher standard. That means longer passwords, more frequent password changes, and making sure they authenticate over, and over, and over again. When we restrict users, we do it because we need to implement the principle of least privilege. The principle of least privilege is making sure that everyone gets what they need. With them getting the necessities, you can reduce your attack surface. An attack surface is how many ways attackers can successfully breach your security. This is your number one priority as someone who's trying to make a secure system. By covering every place, you can mitigate these risks. So what does this have to do with users? Well, a compromised system might have some people who don't look like they belong there. I don't remember having this many administrators. Now, you'll want to have some documentation on hand, specifically a list of everyone who should be on the system and what roles they originally had. Obviously, a majority of these users should exist on our system. I'll go ahead and introduce two methods for deleting users from our system. The first thing you're going to want to do is navigate to Microsoft Management Console. From the local users and groups snap-in, it's as simple as right-clicking and deleting a user. For Control Panel, simply navigate to the User section and delete the user. Now, what if we're missing somebody? It's as simple as adding them with either Control Panel or Microsoft Management Console. In local users and groups, you can right click the empty space and have a prompt for adding the user from here. As for control panel, it's as easy as clicking add a new user in PC settings. This isn't the end of it though, we have to make sure that all of our users are the right role. Refer to your documentation to ensure that you've got the right roles for your users and admins. Here's how to manage your users. Because you're limited in options in Control Panel, we'll only do this through Microsoft Management Console. In the Users section in Local Users and Groups, you'll want to right-click the user, go to their Properties, and then check what groups they're a member of. You can modify them by adding or removing them from groups depending on what your documentation says. There are additional groups that may exist on your system. It's a good idea to vet each of these groups and ensure you've only got people in two groups, Administrators and Users, unless, of course, stated otherwise. Keep in handy some references just to make sure that the only user groups that exist in the group area are the default ones that come with the system. The next thing we'll need to check out are the user properties. User properties are additional settings that can be troublesome if not configured correctly. Yeah, you'll have to go through each user property. This is to ensure you're thorough and you haven't missed anything. Here are the user properties. User must change password at next logon. Depends on your practice if you want users to log in and then change their password immediately or not. That's up to you. User cannot change password. You need users to be able to do that. Leave this unchecked. Password never expires. Passwords need to expire. Leave this unchecked. Account is disabled. It depends on you. I don't think you need to disable their account. Account is locked out. Still depends on you. Um, if this is on, it's more than likely that the account was locked out because someone was trying to log into it. So leave that unchecked. We're almost done here, we just have one more thing. By default, Windows will have a built-in administrator and guest. You'll want to have these locked down, which means we're going to have to go through the same thing we did with all of our users. If we delete them, they'll just come back, and you don't want to delete them. So just lock them up, have a password set, and change their names. So when it comes to our users, we need to apply some important settings called lockout policies. Remember when we talked about password attacks? These can be thwarted by applying lockout policies. 
These can be accessed the same way you access local security policies, whether through a Microsoft Management Console or just looking up secpol.msc in the run prompt. You can go ahead and take a look at the lockout policies. Let's go ahead and wrap up the lesson for this episode. First off, I'm back, and Adobe Premiere is vastly superior compared to Sony Vegas. The difference between a standard user and an administrator. The principle of least privilege. The principle of attack surface. How to add and delete users. How to add and delete groups. How to modify user properties. The built-in accounts and how to lock them down. And then the account lockout policy. More and more. And that's just about it for this episode. The episodes will be getting more and more detailed as we go along. So, get ready for that one. I'll see you in the next one.